Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Hair Literacy. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you guys are new so that you guys are updated on my second hair transplant journey progress, as well as video topics covering current hair loss treatments in the pipeline. Also, visit my website at hairlicency.com to grab your micro needling devices to stimulate hair growth, my DHT blocking shampoo and serum, low level laser therapy cap, hair growth supplements, and a few other products that can help with hair growth. So in today's video, I wanted to give you guys an update on what's been happening lately with Dr. Suji. Um, I've been getting a lot of requests from my viewers since the last video update on Dr. Suji was back in um, August 2019. So as you guys know, Dr. Suji is going to be our best bet for curing hair loss. For those who are new and don't know much about the research behind Dr. Suji, um, he's probably the best short-term prospect for a hair loss cure like I've mentioned before. Through stem cell multiplication, he has partnerships with several reputable companies in Japan, specifically Riken, Organ Technologies, and Kyocera. And the good thing about Dr. Suji and his hair follicle stem cell research is that it is being conducted in Japan, which means faster clinical trials and government approval after the Japanese government pushed for an expedited approval pathway program for all regenerative medicine medicine products, including hair follicle stem cells. Basically, in a nutshell, um, his research can help somebody who is completely bald, you know, blown out Norwood 7 to a full headed Norwood 1. They take a few uh, hair follicles from the back of the scalp and extract and isolate the mesenchymal and epithelial stem cells using a method that the lab has developed. The two stem cells are then going to be cultured, which generates an infinite number of hair follicles, which can then be transplanted uh, into virtually any balding areas in the scalp using current mainstream hair transplantation methods. These two stem cells are important as the embryonic hair follicle induction and formation are regulated by these two interactions that literally determine the hair follicle fate. Now we also that once Dr. Suji commercializes this treatment, um, it's not going to be cheap at all. My last video did cover the cost of such treatment and based on information that we found that was provided from a Japanese hair loss blogger who apparently attended one of Dr. Suji's lectures in 2019, uh, said that it's going to cost anywhere from $180,000 to $360,000 USD and it's going to be expected to become more affordable over the next decade. Um, obviously, you know, after commercialization, they are going to have to increase the capacity Cities. They're going to have other companies who are going to compete, uh, also with share patents, and hopefully other biotech companies, pharmaceutical companies who are going to pick up similar methods of treatment at a cheaper cost. Treatment is going to be available to the public, including non-Japanese citizens, and commercialization is still expected, um, as far as as far as I know, to occur sometime in 2020 to 2021. Now, on April 1st, we received a surprising update from Organ Technologies, who stated that Dr. Suji has resigned from his director position and took office as an advisor. And no, this is not an April Fool's joke, um, as some of you guys might have thought. But because of this, I actually sent an email directly to Dr. Suji as well as Rekin asking for any updates and where the hair follicle stem cell research stands. And unfortunately, I have not received anything back from them. But when I do, I will give you guys an update. So what exactly does the fact that Dr. Suji has resigned from director to advisor mean for his hair stem cell research? Does it really mean that everything has failed and that we no longer can look forward to a cure? Obviously, nobody knows for sure since there hasn't been any official statements as far as why that is the case or why he actually resigned from his position. The good news is that he is still with Organ Technologies and possibly still uh, is overseeing the project just in a different capacity. Now, we do also know that Dr. Suji gave a lecture on January 2020 on next generation regenerative medicine, specifically industrial regenerative medicine industrialization for 2020. And he does mention um, hair follicle regeneration as quality of life medicine within that lecture. It wouldn't make sense that he gave this lecture and decided to call it quits after you know years and years, nearly a whole decade of important and crucial research and partnerships with huge biopharmaceutical companies. And if he really did resign due to his failed hair follicle multiplication research, um, I think he probably would have resigned completely because it would have been such a huge failure. Uh, but given that he is now the advisor, it may possibly indicate, and I say possibly because I don't know for sure, and this is just my speculation, but perhaps Dr. Suji and his team is near completion or have actually completed the research and is now advising his partnerships on how it's gonna be released for business and marketing purposes. Um, as you know, they've been pretty secretive about any type of clinical trials and results, particularly human clinical trials, but I assumed 
that they had actually begun the human clinical trials in 2019, but there's no official confirmation. But it sounds like Dr. Suji is planning on releasing this treatment still within the 2020 to 2021 timeframe. Some of you guys were asking me about the source for the human clinical trials since it appeared that nobody knew exactly what was going on. But if you guys take a look at this article here, dated June 2019 from Beyond Health, which is a Japanese news site that delivers the latest innovation to health and wellness information, stated that human clinical trials were underway to begin at a university hospital within 2019 for treating male pattern hair loss. It further mentions that the manufacturing method for the epithelial and mesenchymal stem cells have been established for nearly nine years since 2011, and that a stable manufacturing method has been developed through joint research with Kyocera, and product standardization has been successful. So my speculation is as stated, they should be releasing human clinical trial results soon as they are near completion, if not completed. And since the research has technically been done, uh, Dr. Suji has transitioned as an advisor for commercialization. This is obviously the best case scenario, the worst case being that everything failed and he stepped down. Uh, but to me, that just seems like it's not the case given the circumstances. And I really do hope that we do hear an official update from Dr. Suji and his partnerships. So I really don't think that him transitioning from director to advisor is of any major concern. But as always, let me know what your thoughts are. These are basically my own speculations, as I said before. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up and I will keep you guys posted on any additional information that I either receive or find. Thanks for watching guys, make sure to subscribe as well as on my Instagram platform. It's the same username as Hairliciously. Um, and I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Take care.